Hiya guys, it's me again, Stories in the Day. People are asking about Viv Graham, the leader for Yanny Buick, the well known characters of their area. So I can only do so many at a time, guys, so you have to bear with me. So I'm going to tell you a few about Lee Duffy today. Fantastic fighter, really good friend of mine. <clears throat> Obviously, we had a bit of a fight when we first met, ended up shaking hands and being, going on to be the taxman at Teesside. But yeah, there's stories um, about Lee, about him being in jails, about the fight he'd done now. But there was lots of other things. I mean, there was one there, he went to South Bank one day and he, he went up to these young lads. He went, What are you doing there? About seven, they're all about 16, 17 year old. I was just getting a few quid together, a bit of, bit of tack, they called it. Lee had a nine bar, he went all one. Snapped it in half, gave them four and a half ounces. Four and a half ounces in them days, it's a lot of money now. He'd give it to them off and out. He never used to, he never he would give somebody something and ask for it back. He was always generous. He'd see somebody in a pub in the egg and he'd go, go here. What are you doing? He said, I'm just going home, Lee. I'm, I'm a bit skinned. He said, I'll see you later. I want to see you in the toilets. And now they'd think, oh, what have I done? So you go in the toilets with that, I can go, yeah. Like in your pocket, I'll give him like 20 quid or something. He was really, like really generous. So anybody who borrowed out of people, he'd pay them back. So. The only tax people were like horrible fuckers or bullies that bullied him. Like I told you the story, a few of us were driving through one day, <coughs> South Bank. And his mum lived in the belt houses. Now the bell houses they look like the bell shape. So they called them the bell house, like no the old like, like a Dutch house. So my uncle lived there years and years before this. My uncle lived there. And there used to be a hairdresser's down there where you used to get your hair cut. Like they were like a, it was like on an estate and it was like free, but they were like trainee hairdressers. I remember we used to go there a few times with my uncle. So anyway, Lee's, we're driving through, we're going to his mum for something to eat. It was early hours in the morning. People were going to school with the kids and that. Anyway, there was a lad at the, at the, uh, the crossing. He went, yeah, wait a minute, big fella. You know, called me a big fella a lot. Wait a minute, big fella. So I stopped the car, he jumped out, ran over and fucking slapped him. Dropped him on the on the zebra crossing. <clears throat> Didn't knock him out, he was on the floor like that. He was like, warm his arm. And he said, face, sorry. He said, you fucking know what it's for. I know, I know. He said, I'm sorry, Lee, I'm sorry. <coughs> frogging me throat. So he said, I said, what was that about? And he went, that bastard used to bully me at school, him and five other lads used to get me every day and beat me up. And I used to get bullied off six kids. It's so strange the stories he tell, tells you. Anyway, he went to his mum's and he, he was never angry in fighting Lee. You know, you get people and go, come on, I'll smash your fucking all that. He'd go, come on then, how are we then? One to one, come on, how are we then? Throw your punch. He never got angry, he never got aggressive, you know, like a professional boxing, the one in the ring, the dead calm, he was like that. Where me, I'm like, fucking smash your house, like, how, how's all where them ones all scream and shout, get me aggression up. Well, he was just calm, collective, and did it, he, he was really good, super fast hands. And uh, yeah, he was uh, he was a good lad, Lee, and some of the stories about him that go around, a lot of them are true and some of them are made up, but there was another one, when he was in jail, when you went to jail then, I don't know what it's like now, but you used to get like, if you got nicked for fighting, see me and him were having a fight, I'd turn a bit of him. I'd have a black eye, he'd have a black eye. I fell over, I need to eat, fell over. That's what you used to do. So when you got nicked in jail then, they'd give you extra days. So Lee was getting out and he burnt 300 quid off a lad from Middlesbrough. He was a well-known businessman and a well-known top boxer, could fight for fun. But he was a millionaire, this lad. He lent Lee 300 pound and he would pay him on, say, the Monday when he got out. But he, he, or whatever day it was getting out of Friday, or whatever day he was getting out, he couldn't get out because he did someone in jail. And he got an extra two or three days. So he was in two or three days extra. So so when he come up, he come out, the lad had been round went, where is he? He fucking said he'd have my money today. He owes me £300 shot and ball at least. Missus. But she never said no to him on the phone. Because he had the phones in them days, the other the phones. Uh, didn't have mobiles. So she kept it quiet, but when he got back, she told me, what do you mean, he's been around here shouting his mouth? He said, for the 300 pounds, he's trying to like, fuck him, I'll fight him. He said, who would think, who would think he is? Because Lee was only young still then. This bloke was about 10 years older than me, but big physique, but really good, good, really good boxer, top boxer. So he gets Teddy Dicko. Teddy, if it Dicko can verify this, he says, Teddy, I don't want to go to his house because he's got kids in that. He said, there's nothing, Willie. Really. Didn't want to go around with he had kids in that in the house. So he said, Terry, Terry went like three times before he could catch him. He caught him. He said, Oh, he wants to fight. I'll fucking fight him anyway he wants. He owes me 300 fucking quid. He says, No, about the money. He said, I was screaming, shouting at their last while, while, he, while he was in jail. He got extra days. He didn't give him a chance to explain. He said, But he's past that now. He just wants to fight you. So anyway, they went to a place on a field. They met. Well, he said, Get in. He said, That's what he used to do with them days. We'd jump, somebody, I'd go my car, say, and they'd go in theirs. And the other people would stay in the car park. And then you'd. Both of these would go for a fight so no one could get in, involved then. You know, where 
the two just went drive down in the car and come back. You could see who would by the faces. So anyway, Lee, Lee told me this story as well. Lee told me the story what happened word for word, so I got it off him as well. But Terry told me as well. So anyway, this lad went down there. He tried to do all that fancy Dan boxing and Lee just went boom, left jab, dropped him. He went, oh then, get up. And he's oh, fucking out, he runs at him, throws a big wild right hand at Lee and he bang, jabs him again. He said, come on, fucking hell, he said. I thought you were a great boxer. He's come at Lee again. He went, bang, bang. Two shots like that and caught him. Beautiful. Three times dropped him. Come at him again, boom, dropped him again. The fourth time, he's going, I've had enough of that. He said, get fucking up. Get up. He said, uh, get up. Screaming, shout at my wife, my, my, my cousin's wife, she was. Even though they weren't married, they were together seven years. So he's saying, fucking threatening my fucking missus. And I've got kids in the house and everything. I'm sorry, Lee, I'm sorry. He said, just keep the 300 quid. He said, uh, you're not getting anywhere now. You, fucking cheat. you couldn't, you'd have got it. If you'd have listened. Anyway, he went there. He was going to have another go and Lee just left it. He said, he was fucked. His face was bust the fuck. And Terry said, when they come back in the car, the lad's face was split, his nose, his eye, his mouth, everything was all cut. And he never, ever disrespected Lee again after that. So there's a lesson. Give people a chance. Have they owe you money and let, let, give them a chance to explain. And if it's a load of bullshit, obviously do something about it. But don't just go, you can't go to people's house screaming and shouting at someone's wife when they're in when they're in jail. You know, just wrong. So Lee, God bless you, my brother. Another, another story from in the day.